Hey, so good morning, everyone. I don't know what time frame it is that you're in or where you're at, but it's morning for us. So I'm going to tell you, good morning. It's actually very early morning. I uh, woke up early this morning and uh, I was thinking about you guys. Uh, the last video <clears throat> I posted, uh, there were some great questions in there. And uh, so I wanted to kind of go over those questions um, to help clarify that other video. And then I got some video footage of that door when I went there and repaired it. And I don't think I showed it before. So I'm gonna show it after I kind of talk to you guys about some of the questions I had. So on that 18 foot tall door in that video, <clears throat> somebody said something about pusher springs. And <clears throat> you know, that's probably not a bad idea. It probably wasn't a bad idea to have pusher springs on that door. I personally don't like pusher springs. I've had them pop over the door. I've had them, um, they, they make a lot of noise. They seem like they put a lot of extra strain on the opener. <clears throat> and in my mind, that door already had roof pitch to it, which is track that's bent up that goes along the roof, right? <clears throat> so it has this already a slope effect to it, which is good for that having a jack shaft. Now, to be honest with you, I've literally, with those kind of doors with roof pitch, I had a customer that was having so many problems on a smaller door with pretty low roof pitch. It wasn't sloped a lot, and their weather seal was really tight. I, I don't know. The door was just, I don't know if it was the customer, but it was, here's the thing. It was too far away to screw with it. That's just the bottom line. So I ended up putting a trolley on it, and it, I never got another call back. Knock on Knock on wood, <laughs> never got one more call back. But I would get a call back maybe every other month and it, it would always, it never failed. It never failed. It'd be like a Friday, two o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock. Hey, our door threw off the cable. We can't get it closed. It's, you know, we got it up right now. Can you send somebody or they get it down and it was crooked. And it was, they were really nice doors. <clears throat> and, you know, eventually, you crush a pop can so many times, it, it just it doesn't ever come back. And that's what garage doors are in my head. You, you sit there and they take impacts and impacts and eventually it's just ripped in half and it's like there's nothing left. Anyways, so <clears throat> pusher springs, yeah, could have been on there. Um, I don't know, I wasn't the original installer of that door. So that was kind of, you know, we kind of had to remarry it back up to the opener and that. And I felt comfortable. And honestly, I still feel comfortable that if somebody just prevented a maintenance on it once a year, the door will be fine, but if it gets crud and it gets really crusty, sure, they could easily throw off the cables and then we might have to put on pusher springs. Other question I had. Um, I had a little bit of confusion. I should have took a picture, but honestly, as soon as the guy stacked the door and I seen the center styles, which is why I'm in my garage, my, my back, back, back shed, that's my only non-insulated door I have on the property, is... The center styles were off and it seemed like there was confusion of people maybe not quite understanding or I wasn't um, explaining it very well of why the center styles were off and it was it was my screw up. So when they were in my enclosed trailer, if you look at that video when we were cutting them, that's how they came basically from the factory. They were all packaged together and in our minds, we thought <clears throat> we're just cutting off one end. It's all good, right? Well, in theory, the panels are flipped when they're stacked together. So we were literally, you know, we were cutting off the end of like this side of the door and then we were cutting off another side over there. So what it does is it actually throws this center style off. So we went to stack the door. <clears throat> we went ahead and nowhere to land our hinges. So we need the center styles to match up. So that was where when we cut them, we cut them wrong. And it was my screw up for not catching that, that <clears throat> everything was off. So when we, so that's why we ended up ripping these center styles off and moving them over to make them line up. So I hope that it kind of explains why we were tearing them apart. We re-glued them back in and we had to do, we had to do what we had to do. So what was the other question I had on it? Come on, let me think here. So we had the pusher springs. Oh, another question. Why did it replace the door? The door actually wasn't in horrible shape. Um, I know it's had numerous of failures. Like I said, I've never really set foot on that property that much. Most of the time, I had other technicians that don't even work with me, work for me anymore that used to work there more. And then just, just out of coincidence, the maintenance guy that was in charge 
either resigned, quit, got fired. I don't know the situation. It's not really my business. Um, is gone. That basically approved of it. So the new guy that moved in obviously was like, hey, when's this door coming in? And uh, he's a real nice guy. And um, we were just in the midst of here it is and we had it and we had to make it work because we were already, you know, I don't know what, it, what we waited for. But so that door you'll see in this clip afterwards was me repairing it. And I was doing a really good job trying to repair it because I know in my head what's probably down the line, which is everything is going to take longer. I have to make this thing survive. I don't want to be in a pinch. So he calls me in another week and goes, hey, it broke again. And I'm just going, oh, my gosh. Because, it see, for me, I don't know about you, it never does me any good to take corners, to take shortcuts. It really doesn't. Because no matter what, somebody will call me, and it's always going to be right in the middle of I'm doing another job or I'm into a project. And I'm like, oh, like, now I got to drop what I'm doing and I got to go save and rescue this. That doesn't do me any good. And I, I really am believing preventative maintenance is a essential in the business that we do because it eliminates that emergency. I mean, I just don't know why we don't do it more often. I mean, you don't drive your car and never change the oil. You don't drive your car and never change the brakes. I mean, things need maintenance. And if you're a technician and been doing this for years, you know that oil will go a long way with garage doors. And, I mean, we can't foresee, obviously, broken springs and stuff like that. But we could probably see frayed cables. We could see rollers. We might be able to hear for them. We might just change them out. Like, uh, that one I just did for the <clears throat> road commission. I, you know, feel like I should have just changed up the roller. I started hit-picking them, and they were making noise. And I'm just going, <laughs> you know, by the time I already, you know, there's, whatever, 20 rollers in here. I already changed, you know, eight. You know, should just, whoosh, just wipe them all out because they, they only have so many cycles on them. And you know you've already changed three sets of springs on it. They're probably getting bad, especially being two-inch rollers being disused and in a horrible environment. So anyways, let's get to the rest of this clip, and we'll go from there. So hopefully I explain some stuff a little bit better for you guys. Really appreciate the, the comments. I, I, I do enjoy reading them. Uh, I'm not the fastest at getting back to them. Sometimes I just don't even get them. I don't see them until I either get on the main computer, which is very rare. My uh, cell phone does a lot. It's just more convenient. More convenient, or oh, I'm just more lazy. So I don't know, but I just know that the phone works a lot better, but sometimes all the notifications don't always come through on my phone, emails and all that whatnot. So until I sit down, which is like, feels like once a month right now, and look at a computer and go, oh. <laughs> Anyways, let's watch the rest of this video. See ya. All right, I wanna go through this real quick. If you run into a pinch on a commercial door, or any door, I guess I'm sick of it. Look at, look what's going on here. This thing's roached. Just roached. So a fix. Let's get these bearings. Get these bearings. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. So the way you do it is you use some leverage. This is actually holding this up right now. See how it's wobbling around? That's holding it. And then we gotta put these bolts to drill holes. Just to hold the weight of it. Gotta get these bearings out. Keep them on your truck. Okay, like I said, it's loud in here again, but see I got that bolted in there? Like I said, it's a temporary fix. They want to replace the door. I gotta get some dimensions. I got it bolted. That's not the best, you know, right there, because it's there is clearance in there. But it's better than what they had. So it can be done, people. It can be done. If there's a will, there's a way. At least it's riding on something now and it shouldn't wreck that shaft anymore. It's about ready to bust off. The whole shaft needs to get replaced. So, anyways. Also, I'll take you over and we'll take a look at the keyway. I'll show you what I did over there because that, that uh, fell out and that's what I think originally made the door fail. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Okay, so originally I'm sure this failed because this keyway fell out. So I just slammed the keyway back in there, got these retightened, put these set colors on, boom. You'll never have that failure again. It might hog out the shaft and the coupler, but at least it won't fall and have a failure. Especially for this old, this old girl. That's what you gotta do, put those split collars on there. Good way to fix them. Okay, so, I think there's some things to uh, to actually learn from this job. You know, it's, it's uh, and this is just, it's just those things when you're at the job that goes through your brain that, um, and, I, and I could be totally wrong with this. But, I have a feeling that uh, my technicians have touched this door before. Could be totally wrong i don't know but there's a couple things as a technician 
I understand. And, th and this just goes for everybody. This is like, I'm, I'm talking to myself, you know, I, I, I know this in the back of my head and, uh, and I'm not, I'm totally guilty of, uh, you know how it is sometimes you got to rush through things. You're trying to get to the next service call, you know, and, but I, I hear a common theme across the garage door world that is, you know, well, they need something, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give them a price and, and, uh, you know, then they'll go from there. We always have to remember that when it's broke, it's a problem. You know what I mean? It, it's like, it's like your time to strike. And I'm not saying like to bend somebody over the coals or anything. It's just like, I didn't have to put that bearing on. I could have thrown some lube on it, told them, said, Hey, we really need to get replaced. But let's just say the maintenance guy, he's got a million other things going on in his, in his mind, right? He's got machines breaking down. He's got roofs leaking. He's got a ton of things going on. So I spent probably an extra two or three hours here doing extra stuff to make sure the door should at least survive a year or two before if we can get back. Now he wants to replace it, but I've been down this road before. We're going to, you know, quote it. It's going to, it's going to be a number that they look at, you know, a piece of paper and they go, Oh, and then the door still goes up and down though. Right. It's like a car. You know what I mean? It's like a car, like your car still runs and still goes. You're just going, gosh, I don't know. I don't know. But then when it breaks, right, that's when you just get, God, I wish I would have sold this thing. You know, now it's going to cost me 2000, 3000 for a transmission and, it, it, and I should never put the money into it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, or you're, you know, that's just how it works. So you got to remember, it's not a problem until it breaks. So right now, today was their day, man. I went through that door and I oiled it. I put split collars on it. I put a bearing on it. Got a little extra love. You know what I mean? But I had the time. I had the time. So I did it. You know what I mean? Now, if I had three more service calls to go to and people are broken down, and um, then it might be a little bit of a different story. But, but I think what I'm trying to get to with the point here is that do what you got to do while you're there. Because the door, the door is open, right? The door is open to come in, please help me, you know what I mean? Fix my door, make it right, make it make it work, right? It's kind of like the mechanic, right? If he does a, a band-aid on it, you're just going to keep driving the car. I mean, you know you shouldn't, but most people will just keep driving it because they go, I don't know, it's still working. But then when it leaves them stranded up north on a camping trip, and they get all frustrated and mad, that's when they go, oh, I guess, you know, now the time, for, you know, fruition, fruition came to reality. And now I, I, I need to take it. Now you got to pay a tow bill, right? So it's just like with this garage door. It, it could have a catastrophic failure if I don't fix that bearing. The shaft is about ready to shear off. So is it the way I really wanted to fix it? No, but I'd have to go back to the shop. I'm only one man today because the other guys are working. I just had to do what I got to do. You know what I mean? So this will at least get them by. The shaft is still enough, I think, there that it won't shear off. And now at least it's got a rolling surface instead of metal on metal. So it's just some things for you guys to think about. Um, just remember, take your time, you know what I mean? And uh, be smart, you gotta be safe. Um, yeah, and you'll get through it, you get through it, but it is what it is, you know what I mean? I used to get all, you know, flustered back in the day, you know, when I'd have to rush through things and stuff like that, but now, it's not worth it. Don't take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts. Just do it right because it'll pay off in the long run. There's enough scammers in the world. There's enough people that take shortcuts and put band-aids on things. There isn't enough craftsmen. There isn't enough good, loyal craftsmen, men that will honor their word and take care of things and do the best that they can do versus I just got to get out of here and go to the next and sorry about your luck. Have a good day. Um, I got it. So it's moving. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's just that's just bad, bad worth work ethics. It's just it'll catch up. You know what I mean? I'd always rather somebody remember that. You know, hey, he did a good job. You're, you're hoping that even if they if they hire your comp competition, that you know they probably will slip up, and then that person will sit there and go, you know, the other people always took good care of me. They were courteous. They were nice. They did show up. They did a good quality job. You know that's all you got. You got service. You know, I, I was told this once, maybe I've said it before. I don't think I have. I was working at a place once and they told me, you know, they said, you can get a cup of coffee anywhere, but it's the service that brings you back. When you come in the door and somebody mentions your name or says, how are you doing today? You know, 
Now, I mean, I get that, you know, you're getting crappy coffee all the time that, uh, you know, you might not. But if you get a nice person that greets you in the morning and, and maybe they correct something if you do tell them, um, you, you're going for the service. You know what I mean? We can buy these products. They can buy stuff. They can do stuff. I mean, this guy had the, the door already partially put back together. And, uh, but, you know, he, he knows his limits and, you know, it needed a few things. It did actually talking about limits and needed some limit nuts on it. Um, they weren't quite as bad, but I replaced them because he mentioned it and he said, I think they're getting bad. So that's fine. They weren't totally shot. They weren't totally brand new either. So I did it, you know what I mean? But that way he feels, you know, you got to listen. You got to listen to what the customer's saying. And like he had that quiver. I call it quivers. He had the quiver of, you know, hey, the limit nuts aren't, you know, this and that. Not a problem. I'll change them out if I have them. Take a look at it. Change them out. Like I said, could have let it fly, but it's an extra cost. It's extra labor. Um, and, and you get paid for it. You know what I mean? And it's not to say like if it wasn't 100% nothing wrong with it you know just to do it just to make a, a buck but it's good maintenance garage doors and gates need a lot of maintenance they really do people neglect them you know how it is anyways i'm rambling on i'm gonna get to it i'm ready to get lunch I already spent half the day here so hope you guys learned something take care be good craftsmen out there and subscribe hit that like button on your way out if you don't mind talk to you later see ya